Welcome back to Guna Fanzine TV. This week we're on the road again. We're in a cinema in South West London to talk all things Arsenal yet again. I'm joined yet again by Dan the Man Mountney, Leif Youssef and Sergi Boy. Uh, this week, lads, I think we'll talk a little bit about Arsenal have just signed a uh, Pablo Mari defender to strengthen the back line. Obviously, this season, a lot of issues at the back. And it's uh, very much a cultural thing, like the Mustafi mistake, something we've seen time and time again. Like, what, what do you think has led to that sort of cultural, that built up to that? Blimey, there's a question. Um... It's, it's been going on for a while. Arsenal just haven't been able to defend for for more than 10 years, basically. You look at the great sides under Arsene Wenger up to 2006, 96, 98 to 2006. There, there were some great defenders there. There were great units, there were great back lines, big characters, people who took pride in defending. They weren't just going through the motions. They, they wanted, their the whole reason for being was to not let in a goal, obviously, like Sir Tony Adams, you've got Lee Dixon. Even in the, the latter stages of those great sides, Ashley Cole, Lauren as well, all of them had that thou shalt pass mentality and they, they they took it as a personal affront if they conceded a goal, basically. Somewhere along the line after 2006, that was lost in this sort of orgy of attacking football from youngsters that had no experience, no no sort of understanding of the ethos of the club um, and, and, and didn't have really dis- defensive discipline either. And it was, it was really frustrating and it was sort of morphed into just buying really bang average defenders such as Mustafi for 35 million whoever was at Valencia who, who, who basically banked that check for 35 million must have been absolutely laughing because he's not showed his worth at all I mean we obviously want him to be fit again and I think it is just an ankle sprain more than anything so um, we wish him well but at the same time that culture of defending hasn't or a lack of defence defending and lack of defensive now it just hasn't come out of nowhere it's it's been a gradual decline over the last 10 years and obviously with the signing of Pablo Murray hopefully that that will start to um to get back to where we want to be because Mikel Arteta certainly wants that and um that that's a good thing basically yeah stop taking you seriously when you said orgy but... <laughs> <laughs> never thought I'd hear that before after a TV video <laughs> no words <seriously>. anyway <laughs> Dan when do you think that defense those defensive issues started cutting off was there a moment do you think well I, apart from the orgy bit I kind of agree with Leif there was too much too much focus on attacking football and the defending kind of went out the window I mean I, I said this in a previous video that I think when when that kind of invincible defence went, there was kind of not really a focus on coaching defensively, which caused which obviously caused a huge problem. I don't I don't think we've ever recovered from that really. Um, and I think in terms of the signings, a lot of it has been panic last minute. You look at people like Mustafi, yeah. David Luiz has obviously improved in recent weeks, but didn't get off to a great start. At Arsenal. Um, I think a lot of that has been panic. People like Squalacci as well, Silvestre. The list, the list goes on. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I think names from our worst oh, of the decade. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's just bad. Um, but I think with Mary, the important thing is it's not really been panic. They've been looking at him for a while. That was said in the interviews today, obviously signed earlier today. Um, you know, Edu said that we've been looking at him for a while. Mary said the same thing. Um, obviously, you know, he's got a bit of pedigree about him in Brazil. Won the Copa Libertadores, um, the Brazilian League as well with Flamengo. Won trophies, got decent experience all over the world. Um Feeling fairly positive about signing. I mean, we, me and Serge have actually watched him play. Yeah, um, didn't yeah. didn't really remember this until earlier today. We watched <laughs> yeah. him in the Copa Libertadores final. Um, it was it Shea Guevara, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So we have seen him play. I mean, obviously one game you can't really judge him off that, but I do think he looks fairly decent. Obviously, left side of centre back fills that role, having a left left footed defender that Arteta has been after basically. So feeling fairly positive about it. I'm glad there's been that due diligence of looking at him for a while rather than just kind of panicking and saying right, we'll take him. So yeah. Yeah, feeling yeah. fairly positive about it. Yeah, yeah. So obviously we'll focus in on Murray a little bit specifically and a little bit later. But do you think uh, Arteta's obviously that's his main area to really improve yeah. on, isn't it? At the back, do you think a uh, more strength in depth is well, is part of this issue? So I think that's the problem with Arsenal's uh, and Arteta's team is that historically George Graham, we were just the one nil to the Arsenal's that famous chart from that era. We were hand up offside trap team. We were the defensive stout team of the era. And Wenger inherited a fantastically drilled defensive team. Lee Dixon himself said it. He said, Wenger said to him, just, just go out and play. You know how to defend. I can't teach you anything more than that. And obviously when that team went out, it was never really replaced. And it's not been replaced. It's not been replaced. It's not been replaced. Now Arteta's in. And he's got a real big job ahead of him because he's got a defence that isn't really as efficient as Arsenal fans would like it to be. Because, you know, we've historically seen some excellent defenders in our time. I think we still put everyone to that comparison. We've got the comparison because we've had some of the best defenders the league has ever seen. You know, Ashley Cole, when he was with us, was turned into the best left back in the world. We had Tony Adams, you know, Mr. Arsenal himself was a fantastic defender. So Arteta's got not only just a difficult job getting good defenders in, but 
our expectation is we're so much higher because we've had 10 years of terrible defence. So we want to go back to the old days. So our test's job of actually getting the strength and depth is going to be a real struggle. And Mary, you know, I've seen him play two games and I wasn't particularly over-enthused. You know, the couple of Libertadores, it was a slightly blurry screen for one reason or another. wonder why that was. <laughs> why are you really drunk? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we were. <laughs> well, was, I, was, was, I was there as well, wasn't I? Yeah, Remember you were talking to Alex Brooker in the corner. Oh, that's why I didn't watch the game, yeah. yeah. Alex... And then obviously <laughs> saw him again in the uh, the Club World Cup final yeah, Liverpool. against Liverpool, which once again that wasn't a particularly fantastic game. So, will he solve our problems? I don't think so. I'm also not massively fond of players on loan, as well, because I don't think if you get a defender in, which is something we need to strengthen, you don't want a loan player because a loan player you're going to do all the work for and then they're going to go. <laughs> ideally, you know, like. But if Danny Sabayos, we've got a great player, but he's because he's got injured, he's now saying, oh, I want to leave because I'm not getting enough game time. Yeah. He's not, he's not going to help him get into the Real Madrid starting eleven. So if we get Marion, and if he doesn't play every single game, if he gets an injury, then he'll leave. So we put a load of effort and intent into training him up. We're not going to be able to reap the rewards. So we really need to just be buying someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's what Arteta needs to do in the summer. I think this is just going to be papering over the cracks because obviously Mustafi's having his scan today. We've not really heard any news about that yet. But realistically, this Mary is not going to be, you know, he's not going to be the, the heralded as the, the second coming of Arsenal's defence. Yeah, no, he's, mm. got, he's got to come in, hasn't he, to, uh, to team I, up I, this season. I personally disagree a little bit with the, the loan thing for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I think obviously it's difficult in the January market to go out and buy your necessarily top target for big money. The second thing is from... From reading interviews with people like Edu and Mary himself, and obviously there is an option to buy in the summer, it sounds like he's someone they have been tracking for at least six months. I think it's saying that, obviously, depending on how he does, but it sounded to me the way they were speaking in the interviews like it is going to be made permanent in the summer regardless, and it's someone that Arteta and Edu wanted. So I don't I don't think it's necessarily papering over the cracks. I think it's doing something now that can potentially turn into something long-term. I think you know he's been he's been a professional player for quite a few years now, but so I don't think he's got it in him to be the next Tony Adams. Twenty six, yeah. yeah. But he's approaching his peak years if you're looking like that. Yeah. You know, twenty seven, twenty eight is when footballers, outfield players, obviously goalkeepers, a bit older kind of approach their peak. But outfield players, that is generally when players hit their best. That kind yeah. of twenty seven, twenty eight yeah. age. So he is approaching that. But my concern also is obviously Man City signed him and put him onto three successive loan deals over three seasons. Yeah, but they're renowned for doing that with a lot of players. Yeah, but it just it makes me slightly, slightly nervous. If they've looked at him and gone, well, obviously Arteta knows him from his time there with Pep. He obviously, you know, saw the reports from him, so the reports were good. But if he wasn't good enough to play in their team, then are we kind of getting not the top level player. Yeah, can? but look at look at De Bruyne at Chelsea. I mean, he went out on loan and wasn't. They didn't think he was good enough. And look at him now; he's the best attacking midfielder in the world. I don't. Salah, yeah. well. Salah, Salo, Salo, of course. Yeah. Because yeah. Chelsea are a terrible team. <laughs> that's not about how the players are. You love their chart, though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what with the back line? I don't know. Are we expecting? How do we expect his role to be in the squad for the rest of the season? I mean, is he, is he going to be challenging Gavin Luiz for his place, or is he going to be a Europa League cup player? I think you'll challenge yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll, yeah. yeah. You think it's going to be a David Luiz, uh, Mary sort of centre back partnership, or is Socrates going to. Well, I mean, there's there's like essentially it's... three, well, including holding four mm. fit centre backs. So there's, he's definitely going to have a, a role to play. He's left footed, that... isn't he? Yeah, which yeah. is saying Arteta's been after him to. It, to... <laughs> I, obviously they're not kind of well don't know yet but I don't imagine they're on the same level of quality you look at Laporte at Man City you know he's their only left-footed centre-back and they've struggled without him because mm. it's difficult to play out from the back with two centre-backs who are both right-footed or you know have the same strong foot yeah. so I think it's saying that Arteta has looked at and said you know we need this to really help implement my philosophy and my style so I, I think he's, I think he will certainly play a role whether it's more in the cut competitions remains to be seen but yeah I do think he'll definitely challenge yeah Let's talk about the back line in general. Uh, at Arsenal's strongest now, obviously, a few injuries. Got Bellerin and Tierney in the full-backs. Obviously, the centre-backs have been switched around. Mm-hmm. How far away are Arsenal from a solid back line? The, the, the Premier League-worthy well, you know, top four challenge I, back line? I don't think it's based on individuals. Yeah, no. I think it's based more on the organisational side yeah. of it. Because... It's, it's come to my mind because I can see him right here. But you, you, you think about Arsenal defenders over the past 10 years. They've had some, you know, fairly... Obviously, we've listed the bad ones, but they've had some fairly decent defenders. You look at people like Bakary Sanya, Clichy, Koscielny. You know, all solid, decent defenders. Yeah, yeah. But it's the organisation that's been lacking and that's caused the problems. Mm. So I think I don't think 
it's the individual necessarily. I think it's that drilling them to know where they need to be and to have a leader in there. That's really important as well. But to to command it and understand where where your defensive partners are, whatever stuff like that. So yeah, yeah don't necessarily think the individuals is the main concern. I think that's a really good point because um, you're absolutely right because there have been some really good players um, talking about Sanya and um, Clichy and, and players like that. And you, when Steve Bold came in as sort of defensive coach and, you know, after that sort of Wenger's number two, you thought, great, it's going to be a real sort of culture of defending from a really experienced former Arsenal player who, who's steeped in the history of the club, knows the principles, knows everything about it, knows the club inside out. And it didn't happen. Yeah. So basically for me, I, I think... So it is the personnel at the moment and it's the coaching. So there's a real sort of issue with, with everything around that defence. Um, I think we, if we can assume Tierney's going to be fit long term, I think he'd be a great addition to the back line. Yeah. Um, you know, right hand side, you can you can argue who, who who would you have? Bellerin. I'd have Bellerin all day long, basically. Future Arsenal captain, potentially, too. Centre half. Who, who are we talking about? Obviously, Chambers is out to the end of the season, as you yeah. said. Well, but if we're talking. Socrates, well. Socrates and Louise are yeah. wrong side of 30. Yeah, but if, if we're talking long term, so if, if, if we're on the first day of pre season in the summer, assuming Tierney's fit, assuming Bellerin has kicked on, he's fit as well. You've got your left back and your right back. You've got Saka who could potentially fill in. You've got Kalasanach who can fill in yeah. on the right hand side. Maitland Niles. Maitland Niles as well, yeah, 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 yeah. In, in terms of the right hand side too. So, who are your centre halves basically? Yeah. As you said, Socrates has he got a long term future? I don't know. I don't particularly. When he's on form, he's he's okay. He's better than okay, but he's not a real commanding centre half, and he's not one for the future at thirty one either. To be fair to him, Louise is thirty two already. I don't like him as a centre half. I, I'd play him as a defensive midfielder, see what he can do in terms of his te- te- tactics and technique and everything. So, I don't think he's long term either. Who have you got? Chambers who hopefully come back in the oh, summer. Brilliant. Yeah, Chambers and Holden, that's what I was going to say. I don't so, think they're long-term you know, options it, well, either. Well, that's the thing. So, if we're, if we're talking about those two, are they long-term future Arsenal centre-halves for the next five, six Saliba years? coming back. Saliba, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that's that's something in itself. And obviously, if um, if, if Mari stays long-term, if they, they close a deal for him to play long-term, then that's great as well. So, you've got four centre-halves. Are they good enough to play at centre-half long-term for Arsenal? I don't know. Hopefully. I mean, we've mentioned him in transfer videos over the past few weeks, and I certainly think they'll go for uh, Upen Meccano in the summer. Someone they've been tracking for a long time. Suits what, what's he rated at the moment? Around 40, 45, 50 million. Okay. Um, but I think, you know... All the Ashby's. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, he's quick, he's strong, he's powerful, he's, he's confident with the ball at his feet. Yeah, he's still, what, 20, 21. 21 yeah. So, you know, he's got a really bright future ahead of him and I think he is someone they will go for. They tried it in the summer, obviously, didn't come off. But I do think they, they need someone who is going to develop long term and I think he'd be I the think one. That has to be a signing. Well, yeah. Young what, what about Koulibaly then? Well, he's he's 28, 29 now, yeah. so it's But, but he's a, he's oh, how, how old he's, fans he's like when Liverpool class. boys. He's, yeah. yeah. You're buying him for two or three but years at his absolute peak. He in the last game against Juventus or Was he injured or? He was injured. Okay. I think it's yeah. His price tag is going to be so high because you're yeah. looking at 100 yeah. million. But, but, yeah. but I mean, you, you could maybe bargain them down to about 80 million. But my point is, and it, it stands for the Van Dyke. Lottie would bargain down. I mean, maybe well, not, but, but it's not really about him, is oh, it? Sorry, sorry yeah. It's, it's about. Sorry. Pick, it's about. Gattuso. Gattuso, yeah. It's about. <laughs> yeah, got there in the end. And now we've listed every Italian manager you know, basically. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. It was Angelotti at one point. Well, regardless, I mean, 80 million, 100 million. Like, my, my thing is. I don't. What, why can't Arsenal do a marquee? signing why can't they go instead of a 40 million for someone why not just go right we're going to break the bank we're going to have a centre half who's a world class centre half ready to play he's going to give the best year of his, years of his career for two three four years and buy him why, why do we have to settle with a half price sort of we did, we did a bargain like a massive payment for Pepe that's we've, what we've done happens. our massive 70 bills yeah yeah well yeah. the money's clearly there obviously most transfers now are done in instalments so it does make it slightly easier mm-hmm. but yeah I agree I think they do need to splash out massively on a centre back and then bring in someone like Upen Meccano who's going to develop under you know a really solid world class partner and then he can take over that mantle in what three four years time whatever so yeah. just, just to play devil's advocate there was obviously yeah. talk about Abama Yang maybe going to Barcelona or something certainly not on loan because if he went on loan that'd be absolutely scandalous yeah. in, in terms of January now but if he were, if they asked him to get a bid of 30 40 50 million for him in the summer yeah. would you sell him at no. 30 years old no. and reinvest that in the centre half no, no. why I, no because what well, you mentioned what he's 30 now I'd just get the next two years out of him and then you know because he's, he's clearly still got the pace and he's you know, world class in front of goal. I, th- I don't, I don't think you can risk losing him personally. Even if, even if it is what thirty, forty million, you may as well 
get get the final few years out of him and then let him go for whatever he's when he good. starts he's to decline. He's playing for us at the moment. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Although he, he, he actually was top goal scorer last season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's yeah. our top goal scorer this yeah. season. He's got 15 goals. Yeah. I know all the stats, but just in terms of the fact he's he's not signed his contract <laughs> yet. you shut down. No, 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 I'm just saying it's more than that. It's more than stats. It's, it's the fact he hasn't signed his contract yet. So, you know, if he doesn't sign his contract in the summer, that's 12 months before, well, the, okay. before the end of his contract. Yeah. So then what happens? Do we let the contract run down? We have well, to no, make a decision. Doing that exactly. So we have to make a decision in the summer. So if we say here's a four year contract at 150 grand, 200 grand, whatever, and Barcelona go, well, we want you, we're going to give you 300 grand, but we're only going to offer 30, 40 million. What happens then? What do Arsenal do? Chain him to the desk so he can't. Leave. Apart from chaining him to the desk, what do we do? Well, keep I mean, keep him at all costs. You reckon? Yeah. I think it'd be our results that sway persuade him. I think it was the Emery era. What we put the Mac yeah. Mac in his sight. I think you're right. I think you know he's seen positive signings. You see him in his Instagram videos now. He's a lot more positive. He's showing a lot of his shirts. He's commenting a lot on the youngsters. So he's obviously much more happy in his in this current situation and the current Arsenal performances. Yeah, but money talks, though. And I'm well, just glad we've got know. Orgy and Quagmire in this, <laughs> in this video. We're doing well. <laughs> After that brief. About Tangent. Let's talk again about the defence. Obviously, in our interview with Lee Dixon a few months back, he talked a lot about the leadership in defence. Is that a signing that needs to be brought in? Because there, there just doesn't seem to be someone who takes the defence by the scruff of the neck. And just, yeah, you need, they definitely need a leader. I mean, every defence needs a good leader. You look yeah. at Van Dijk at Liverpool, Sergio Ramos at Real Madrid, you know, players like that who, who are natural leaders. Arsenal need someone they like that. Whether they can find someone like that remains to be seen. I don't particularly think there are that many around. Um, it's be better in, isn't it, in the future? Yeah, but I mean, you need a central defensive yeah. leader. You need someone yeah. in the middle of it who can see both sides, who can see, you know, what's happening in front of them. Obviously, Bellerin can it right back. But, you know, they need someone in the middle. I think a, a leader is... The, one of the most important things, if if they are going to sign a centre back, which I think they will do in the summer. Yeah, yeah, centre back. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for, for someone who you know watched them in the eighties, you you had sort of David O'Leary, who yeah. was a leader. Obviously, Tony Adams saw his debut at seventeen. He looked like a thirty-year-old basically in terms of the way he was showing that sort of leadership capability and and, and class. Basically, obviously pushing it a bit further further forward. Steve Bold, Martin Keown, Sol Campbell. We we we, we were lucky. In, in terms of having big characters, big centre halves who are also leaders, there's no one around. And it's been a real bugbear of mine for for ten, fifteen years now. Just did, where are the leaders? Yeah. Is it me getting older, just going, oh, things were better when we were younger, or was it just the fact there's no real quality leadership leaders at a centre half who can show leadership qualities? You'll know better than me. You know, obviously having sort of scanned the, the sort of European leagues and stuff. But are there any leaders out there? I, I don't see that many leaders in in English football. You could maybe talk about something like Lewis Dunk at Brighton That's potentially, the possibly then, because but, if you look. At other Premier League teams, who would you say is the, the leader of the United defence? Well, yeah, but look how badly United are playing. Someone like Van Dyke for Liverpool is a leader, though, isn't it? Van Dyke's the only one. Think yeah, yeah. City haven't got a particularly poor defence. You can't think of a particular leader for their centre back. No. Sheffield United, you can't. You can't yeah. Oh, I don't know. Sheffield United, I think mean, they've got three leaders personally. Yeah, they had a leader, five, so five leaders yeah, across the back. Well, wow. that's not a leader. A leader's one man. I don't think. That's, I don't think that's the way that the game's played. No, we've, we had five captains, so uh, yeah, yeah. But, but if we're talking about changing the culture badly. You know, organised defence, poor defence in terms of being, not being able to keep goals out. I would say we need a leader. And if there are none about, yeah. what do we do? Well, that's the thing about leaders. I don't think you can make a leader. I think you're born a leader and that's it. I don't think you can mould someone into a leader. Yeah, You've absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Completely agree. People. I think Bellerin's being moulded into a leader. A no, I don't think you can mould. You can't mould a leader. You ha you're either a leader, born and bred, or you're you can, not. You can bring it out of someone. Yeah. I don't think you, you can mould them. To, there has to be something there it. themselves before, you know, before they even so start being a footballer. I, th I think you can nurture that skill in people. <laughs> yeah, but I suppose, yeah, that was quite deep. <laughs> I didn't know what you said. He's got, got the human ape in the corner of it. <laughs> <laughs> Desmond you're Morris, you're right. No, no, I think mean, that's quite a good point in terms of, yeah, you know, if, if you've got it in you, can it be brought out by your environment and, mm -hmm. and coaches and, and being, you know, maybe shown some sort of emotional intelligence and, and a bit of empathy by, by your coaches there. But I, I do think it is intrinsic. I do think you have to have that still and, and leadership qualities in yourself in terms of tub thumping in terms of you know first man over the trenches sort of thing mm -hmm. I don't think you can you can instill that you, you can certainly bring it out if you've got it yeah. and I'm not sure Bellerin has got that certainly compared to someone like Tony Adams but then who has I don't think no, there isn't I, I, I think that's yeah. what I said goes back to what I said earlier we were almost spoiled with yeah. the, the root yeah. quality that we were once exposed to yeah completely agree and also I think the other thing about this whole leadership thing is that 
we forget Arteta's had the team for eight games. He's not had the chance to really see what people's qualities are or see the best in them in their training yet. He's had them for literally yeah. a month. Yeah, and it's what? Is it one defeat in eight? So it's not yes. Bad, is it? yeah. Three wins, four draws and a, and a loss. Yeah, yeah. So and then, yeah. He's obviously managed to get the best out of them so far, but I think there's a lot more to see in terms of his management of their personalities. Yeah. Yeah. More so than the stability. I think the personality is going to be quite an important thing for him to pull out of them. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. do you think he's got that in, in him to bring out that, that organisation? Definitely. definitely, he's a man I think, manager. I think we've seen it, seen it so far. It definitely looks yeah. a bit more organised to me. Yeah. Obviously, there's still plenty of work to do, but I don't I don't think the defensive side has been anywhere near as bad as it was at the start yeah. of the season. I mean, we, we were all at Bournemouth, and um, yeah, what I loved there was the fact that they stood up to Bournemouth. Bournemouth were trying to give it large and sort of give them niggly fouls and everything, and, and, and leave the boot in at times, and they Basically, yeah, that's second Arsenal. Half was, one, yeah, there was what eight minutes of out of time. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Down. And Arsenal just weren't having it. And you could see the shock in the Bournemouth faces. Some of them just going, "This isn't the Arsenal we've known over the last few <laughs> years." Basically, same at Chelsea last week. Oh. And it it was great to see. And I think Arteta can really push that to to make well, it. Eddie Howe said it himself in his press conference. Yeah, and, you know, I didn't know what to expect the first time I played them. Then obviously the. Arteta's has gone suddenly with their spirit and their passion. Yeah, completely changed. Yeah, me and Dan were in the presser for that, and yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what I really like? Obviously, we talk about Gwen and his naivety, but I really love the fact that regardless of who he's playing away from home, he always ends the game being booed. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Wasn't there a tweet about that? Someone said yeah. that, didn't they? They were yeah, just yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't done his job unless he's, he's getting booed, basically. I love he that. Yeah. He's love that. putting the foot in. <laughs> put his slightly high studs up. Yeah. I, I like that to a certain extent, but he does have to be careful with his temperament because it may yeah, cost us one day. Yeah. But you're right, actually, I, I do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I do like that bite. And I do that. where that goes in the next few years if he sort of develops got more mature, but also has that in Well, we're talking about moulding it. I think he's one player you can certainly mould. In the right direction. Yeah. We've got one yeah. of those teams, a young team as well. Yeah. yeah well, we've had two 18 year olds in the past, like what, yeah. four or five games. And haven't so. they played well as well? Yeah. They've been no. the two, two standouts, haven't yeah. they? So. so I think, yeah. you know, I think it's, well, it's one thing to say you need a natural born leader. I think these two 18, two 18 year olds, I think, you know, they've got a lot in them in terms of their passion and uh, credibility to really move upwards in terms of their sort of leadership qualities. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, you do need an experienced couple of players, senior yeah. pros, just to go, look, lads, this is what you do. And this is where you run. This is how you react they'll when... Get, they'll, they'll get, a, 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 you know, shown that in time. They'll get but, that experience yeah. from other players around them. Yes and no. I mean, that's where you go back to the leader again, basically, because... So we tried obviously... that with Lichsteiner and uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kalsham, and that well, didn't really work, did it? For, I mean, for, yeah. Kim yeah. Kalsham Kim, out of this. Kim Kalsham, yeah, he had a broken back, so there's not much we can do about that. No, but but in terms of Lichsteiner, that was such an underwhelming signing. I was underwhelmed the, the, the day he signed, basically, I was like, well, that's not really... We can, we can count it, obviously, as Emery's first signing, but it's, it's a bit of a false war because that, that's not something for the future and that's not he's not going to play every game, basically. But he was completely underwhelming in terms of leadership, basically. Again, he talked a good game in press conferences and you know, the match programme and everything like that, but he was, he was dreadful. He was... He was he, 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 yeah, and he wasn't, and that's the thing that, that goes back to your original point. You, you know, the, how many players have got that? You know, yeah, we might think they have it, but when it comes to it playing for Arsenal, how many? And he'd won seven Serie A titles, as you know, and yeah, it's just, well. you know, is 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 a question? Is a question for you? Is a question for you? We talk about captains and leaders. Do you think Mikel Arteta was a good leader when he was captain? I liked his leadership qualities, yeah. Good good, yeah, very good question. Because um, he was a militant man in that respect. People listened to him. Again, he he, example, yeah. he spoke well and he, he did live two FA Cups, but I never thought of him as a true captain in the sort of Tony Adams sense. He was one more, I'm going to lead by ex- ex- example in terms of, you know, I'm just going to try and play well and, yeah. and, and have a good temperament. Still and, talking with your feet rather than my mouth. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but he, was, he, he wasn't particularly a memorable captain, but I suppose he's won two FA Cups. It, it was more his, just the way he spoke, really, and the way he conducted himself. And I suppose that is, that is part of being a leader, isn't it, really? So, you know, but yeah, in terms of being a memorable captain... No, I don't. I don't think he was. No, respect, but he was one of our better ones that we always forget about. Yeah, because certainly. Because we, we remember by, by the sort of the bad moments of those those campaigns. Yeah. afterwards. we remember the bad moments, not the goodness. Yeah, absolutely. We don't yeah. forget Arteta when he was there. He was at Rangers captain. He was Everton captain. Now Arsenal captain. Yeah. Yeah, I've stopped you there. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we could talk about this forever. That was a really good chat, but we have got to cut it short. Um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, we're going to be back at our usual Galazio studio next yes. week. Uh, looking forward to that and uh, yeah and we'll be at Burnley on Sunday obviously and Burnley of course course. yeah yeah Uh, please subscribe leave a comment and any of your thoughts and cheers thanks for watching Brilliant.